There's a fairly interesting story that I wanted to cover today because I thought it was a really impressive feat for the Tesla supercharging team while simultaneously might needing to be a new concern we have for the rollout of charging stations, which is a bit of a bummer, but it's reality and we have to face that, just like the president having to face who makes the most EVs in the country. But anyway, Tesla has been deploying superchargers in the United States and in Asia and Europe all the time. Highly recommend the Tesla charging Twitter account because they will literally tweet out whenever a new supercharger pops up, and a brand new one with eight 250 kilowatt charging stalls went live in Oakhurst, and only a couple days after first launching, someone went to the supercharger and cut all of the charging cables off, and basically ruled the entire charging station useless. Now, fortunately, thanks to how Tesla software works with the supercharging network, they're able to let all Teslas know that this supercharger is no longer working, you know, there's something wrong with it, so they turned it off. That way, if you're on a road trip, or you need to charge up somewhere the Tesla is not going to route you to that station so just one little perk of Tesla software adapting to that circumstance but what I found incredibly impressive was the supercharging team was able to go out there within two or three days replace all of the charging cables and get the supercharger back online and not only that but they included a solar powered security system it looks like something you would just kind of drop off the back of a truck or a trailer and it essentially has security cameras on it as well as an alarm system and again Again, it's completely solar powered so they don't even have to pull power from the grid for this thing to work time will tell if this actually proves to be effective but of course it's frustrating to know there are idiots and morons out there willing to vandalize brand new company property that's essentially just trying to allow for a zero emission vehicle that is proven to be one of the safest on the road to charge and kind of go where they need to go people want to either harm the supercharger brand because they don't like Tesla for whatever reason no matter how stupid it may be or some Someone was hoping to use the materials within these charging cables and turn them into money or some people were theorizing that if you took these connectors and these high bandwidth charge cables and posted them on eBay you could get a couple hundred bucks for them but I frankly think it would probably be really really easy to track down who exactly vandalized and stole the charging equipment from the supercharger if you started looking on eBay and finding the exact cables but if that does end up being the truth Tesla will have to find new ways of penalizing this type of behavior and tracking down what's going on and unfortunately this may result in overall higher operating expenses to keep growing and sustaining the current Tesla supercharger network because the truth is one of the many perks of electric vehicles and in my opinion probably the greatest strength of all electric cars instead of hydrogen vehicles is how simple the infrastructure is to set up because we already have a very expansive and widely accepted electrical grid you don't need giant buildings you don't need to dig giant holes in the ground and fill them with tanks in order to build a charging station. You basically just need a little bit of equipment that can tap into the grid, and for the most part, you can slap superchargers in random parking lots. They can be off the side of the freeway. They don't need that much at them. So that's why Tesla is able to grow the supercharger network so quickly is because the investment required is not that high. But one downside of making such basic and such affordable charging stations, which 99.99% of the time get the job done, let people charge and get where they need to go. But again, the downside side is that because they're not at a gas station type facility there's typically no security cameras at these things and that means if there is vandalization going on or people abusing these superchargers Tesla doesn't really have much of a process to figure out who did it and how they can prevent it from happening again. I hope that this approach works out with the little trailer approach where you have the little solar panels and some security cameras. I don't know if they're connected to the internet but this would once again be a perfect use case for Starlink being installed at more and more superchargers charging locations. That way, when something does go wrong, if that cord at a supercharger does get cut, there can be a notification on Tesla servers right away, and then they can start beaming that video feed from these security cameras and figure out what type of abuse is going on. I know there are actually some Tesla owners, even, that like to somewhat abuse the supercharger network, where you want to be parked at the supercharger, but you don't want to be charged idle fees. And I get it, it's probably more convenient to do this, but I've heard of it, is essentially to avoid the idle fees when you're done supercharging people will unplug their car but just kind of leave the charging connector hanging on the charge port it's not actually all the way plugged in so Tesla can't technically charge you idle fees but your car is still parked there that type of behavior with the security camera system would probably be easier to track down I'm not saying Tesla should punish those people instantly maybe just send them a little email or a video saying like hey we we know what you're doing we know you're trying to avoid these idle fees or a far more common scenario that we should probably use as a better example would be the I 
icing effect where gas vehicles, particularly lots of big diesel trucks, seem to think it's funny to park their big trucks at supercharging stations, preventing people from being able to charge. If more and more superchargers were able to adopt for security camera systems, it would be easy to catch the license plates of the cars doing this and let tow companies know that they need to tow this truck immediately and hopefully that discourages truckers from icing these superchargers and with really, really quick response times, they would be more and more hesitant to troll the Tesla network. So there might unfortunately be a lot of advantages and examples where having more security built in at superchargers becomes helpful. I hate that that's true because honestly, if everyone was just more respectful and honest, this wouldn't be a problem at all. We wouldn't have icing. We wouldn't have Teslas pretending to be charging when they're not or people stealing supercharging equipment. Like what does this world come to? It's disappointing that there's still so many people that are against Tesla's mission and against the concept of people buying something they like and just enjoying it because it's better for the environment and it's safer for themselves and their passengers. I know, what a terrible concept, right? But I'm hoping that this does not become a more regular thing and the quicker Tesla can step up their security systems at superchargers, the quicker this will probably be discouraged and not happen ever again. But seriously, huge props to the Tesla supercharging team for acting on this issue so dang quickly. As soon as I read about those charging cables being snapped, I was like, oh man, that's probably going to be out for several months. But no, they were really, really quick to respond to that. And I think that's important in a supercharging team because I'm sure you guys are already thinking of all the other issues we have with Tesla superchargers that Tesla needs to start working on. Like how are they going to accommodate for Cybertrucks towing things or even Model X's or Model Y's towing things and needing to make more pull through superchargers so that you don't take up too much space or have to take off your trailer every time you want to supercharge or having to make superchargers with wider stalls so that you can back up your big cyber truck in there not to mention the mega charger network for tesla semi needing to grow and expand very quickly that doesn't even mention the concept that tesla wants to open up the supercharger network to non-teslas which means it's going to be very very easy for all of the other evs out there that have the charge ports in the wrong location to take up multiple stalls because they had to back into the parking spot next to their charger to plug in and then there's the adapter issue and the connectors not matching up Ugh. they have an incredibly difficult job i do not envy the supercharging team but whenever they do something impressive i think we should give them credit so well done and feel free to let me know your guys' ideas on what should be prioritized with this charging network down below thank you to everyone supporting the channel over on patreon helping me afford a tesla later this year and of course everyone just watching these videos that seriously helps out a ton too take care have a great day